So, Dr. Kirsten Braun, CEO of Sten International, thank you very much for coming on Bloomberg Equality. Now, there has been a report out this week that has shown that the number of women on FTSE 100 boards has increased, which is great news in the past year. However, the tenure of those women at the companies is still lower. In fact, it's around half the time of men. It's something like three years versus five years to men. What do you think we can do to stop the tick box attitude to women at the top of companies? In fact, first of all, it's positive news that we see an improvement, but still it seems like it's just um, for the sake of keeping everybody happy outside. And it doesn't seem to come really from inside. And um, so what I believe, and I strongly believe, it needs a long movement. Um, we all need to create more awareness around that topic. It's the first step. Um, I wouldn't say it's negative, but we have to keep going and we have to create even more awareness. What you see in the financial industry and everywhere else is that the attitude towards women is different. They are not taken as serious. They are hired, but then when men talk about women, they talk about the girls, while they would talk about male colleagues, Jack and John. So it's such a subconscious behavior that has to change. So that means the movement um, of creating awareness has to keep going for another couple of years until we see a reversal. The job of STEN is to plug the one and a half trillion dollar global trade finance gap that we see. So you have got a big job and you are hiring talent at a fast pace to try to meet that demand. How do you ensure that you keep a diverse workforce when you have those big demands? So the 1.5 trillion um, finance gap is huge and we um, attract it of course because we have great solutions, aut automation, IT, great organization, good IT infrastructure. So we are faster and more efficient than banks who, so we can tackle that um, under covered gap. Um, but we need more people and when we hire either in our headquarter in London or across the globe in the so-called origination roles, we always hire and try to find top talent. So we always hire people who know their job, their field of responsibility, their stuff better than we do, so we can learn from them. That forces us to keep an open eye, to be always out of our comfort zone because we learn from our, our team members. Um, and that has created a very diverse workforce within STEN. We have in our headquarter in London um, more than 15 different um, cultures, 15 different nationalities. We have different races, three or four different races, and we have um, more different religions. This creates an openness in our organization, which is tremendous. Now, not only within your business, but outside you have access to all of these companies who are doing many different things around the world. Are you seeing any particular trends in the diversity and inclusion space with the companies that you are interacting with? We do. There are um, trends and especially when you look at these big cities, London is a good example, take Dubai, Singapore, New York, look at all of them. What is happening in these big cities is that there's a lot of innovation, a lot of disruption and a lot of growth. And why is that? It's only because you have a diverse workforce. Um, these cities attract people from across the globe and allow these people to come in, of course, as well. And what we observe as well, and there are first statistics out that support this um, assumption, um, it suggests that it's not only diversity, but it's also first generation immigrants. Uh, I use the old term, but it's really high skilled immigrants who come into a new city, a new country, and who have to prove themselves. There is no way for them to go back, and they have to prove themselves. They have a stronger attitude, create more disruption and innovation, and create more growth for companies. We have seen in the past the benefits of the being part of the boys club. Do you think that there are benefits to creating, and I use this term, although you mentioned girls club, <laughs> but the girls club? Oh, that's a very 
different, difficult topic to discuss. Um, I myself have never joined a girls club because I thought when I was young in my career, I have to make it all by myself and I did it. But now looking back and looking at the younger generation, the young female colleagues that we have, um, they are much more relaxed about it. It's the millennials. Um, they have a more open mind. And when they get together and they exchange together about what they experience, their struggles, not too much subjective personal struggles, but professional struggles, and they help each other, I think that's a really good tool um, to empower young women, and they should get together and exchange on a professional level. We have seen this kind of pro-women evolution, but I have read that you think that that's actually reversing. How do we stop the reversal? I, 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 I'm concerned about that and thank you for bringing this up. I see in certain areas some reversal and I think it's very natural if you think about it. Something happens and the it, things are unbalanced. So first um, the trend swings to one direction and then it swings to the other until you find a good middle ground. Um, I think certain trends were that women were pushed, 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 even it didn't make sense. And there are men and even I who wonder why it is so. Um, why is a woman pushed when a man has at least the same qualification? And I see that reversal that uh, men push back, um, but this should not happen. We need to find a good balance going forward for both men and women. And I don't think it's good to um, bring women only to the forefront, only for the ratios, um, because that creates a lot of frustration of men and it, it creates counter um, movements that we can't have 